So Ultimate Spider-Man, that comic I tore apart last month, put out another issue. Now let's see, last issue, Spider-Man wasn't even in the comic. This time, let's see if they put Spider-Man in it. He's in one freaking panel. Less of a freaking ripoff this time, at least he's in the comic. In this one, it begins with the Green Goblin getting killed in the September 11th terrorist attacks. So his son breaks into Tony Stark's house and vandalizes his shit and becomes the Green Goblin himself. Iron Goblin. The comic is about him trying to grow up and become something more than himself or something. And that's kind of been the theme of the comic so far. I don't know. At least there was fighting in it. Okay, I actually want to talk about this. I thought this was going to be the last issue because I remember being told that there was only supposed to be five issues leading into Ultimates. I guess not because there's going to be a sixth issue the same month as the first issue of Ultimates. So far for the past year, Ultimate Spider-Man has been the only comic I've cared about. There was stuff like Daredevil and The Penguin which piqued my interest and then I kind of just stopped reading them. The new Punisher was also kind of boring and I jumped off that fast and I don't even know what's going on with Al Ewing's Thor. But this feels like what comics should be, what Marvel should be. Everyone likes this comic. Everyone likes this version of Spider-Man. It is a new continuity and a fresh take, which is what we need right now. It's midlife crisis Spider-Man, and it's great. This feels like the first time since Doomsday Clock that there's been a comic that everyone is talking about. Every issue feels like an event, except this time everyone loves it. I don't have a comic store near where I live, so I don't buy single issues, but I did go out of my way to get each single issue off of ebay mostly through comic stores and not resellers i haven't really cared about anything jonathan hickman has written before but i've been loving this there's a clear goal to make every issue matter they're all their own story they all have a beginning and an ending and of course i have to say this they remind me of animal man peter is a pure yet fallible everyman who has to look after his family while he exists in a universe that thinks he shouldn't exist i love that type of character maybe that's why i love the series so far because it's basically turning peter parker into buddy baker I love this take on Harry too. His guilt and need to become something of himself makes him an interesting and good opposite to Peter. Like, they're both the same, but Peter is someone who didn't face any loss but felt like his life was wrong, while Harry did feel loss and now has to to make something of himself. My question is, where is all this heading? We have one issue left of the story and then the big team up book. It's obvious that Harry's gonna die. He's dead. He said, with great power comes great responsibility. He's fucking dead. But how does this happen? Can this arc, the so far great six issue arc, finish in an impactful way? I've seen these things fumble before, especially when it's a build up to one short issue. I just hope everyone comes out satisfied because Hickman, you got the biggest comic in the world on your shoulders, dude. I just hope this story ends the way it should. And uh, I hope this is, becomes an ongoing after this, after Ultimates, but we'll see what happens with the whole Ultimate Universe. I don't know. I mean, we'll see in a couple weeks what happens. I won't buy it either way. I won't give this issue an 8 out of 10. Fuck it. Everyone go buy it and read it. It's a great Green Goblin story, even though Spider-Man is only in one panel but who cares it's great uh we'll see what happens and i just know i'll be there if you want some good comics in the meantime i'd highly recommend the infield gang massacre from image it's a very good comic it's a new western comic which has some fantastic art and hyper violence in it it really scratches that western itch that comics have been missing for years while being its own great story i'd also recommend the joshua williamson duke comic over at skybound which was great best thing Williamson has written in years. Might be my favorite thing he's written. Based on his interview with Comic Tropes, I can tell that he has a clear passion for G.I. Joe, and I can't think of a better guy to run the Joe comics. He's also written Cobra Commander, which I haven't finished it yet. I read the first issue and it was pretty tight. I just haven't gotten around to reading the rest, but that just concluded its run as well, so I'll have to... I don't have an excuse anymore. Great art in both books, have a great color palette that suits G.I. Joe well, has like Saturday morning style palette a lot of neon i like it it's my thing but yeah duke's trade will be coming out soon and uh, at a reasonable price instead of 30 dollars for a flimsy trade of floor thanks marvel but yeah let's hope they don't fuck up ultimate spider-man anyway later Spider-Man 2 when Where he Uncle goes Ben emo. says to him with white power comes great responsibility. Yeah. Uncle Ben on his deathbed says white power. With white power <laughs> becomes the white man's burden. <laughs>
keep them safe. Yeah. Keep them. You have to make sure. <laughs> they don't know any you better. You gotta keep Indian people in line. They need you, Spider-Man. <laughs> no, Uncle Ben. <laughs> I'm not ready. I'm not ready to boss Indian women 